Okay, so let's go ahead and start our discussion of adjusting entries themselves. We're going to talk about a high-level summary, and then we're going to focus on the accrual types of adjusting entries specifically. The goal of the adjusting entries is to basically adjust from the cash basis of accounting to the accrual basis of accounting. So this is a list of all the various steps in the accounting cycle. We've already gone through a few of these in other sections, and uh, we're going to focus on just the adjusting entries here, specifically the journal entries for the adjustments. So an important thing to note here, these adjusting entries occur at the end of the accounting period. It could be the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year. We record these adjusting entries before we issue the financial statements because we want our data to be accurate as far as the accrual basis of accounting. We want it to be accurately recorded under the accrual basis of accounting. The goal of the adjusting entries is for all of our income statement and balance sheet accounts to be correct, to be properly stated under the accrual basis of accounting as opposed to just the cash basis. So it's all about the timing issues between when did we receive the cash or pay the cash and when did we earn the revenue or incur the expense. So we're going to give a high level summary of all types right here and then we're going to see some examples of accruals. Anytime you hear the term accrual, we're saying that the revenue or expense needs to be recognized before we have received the cash or paid the cash. Now, if we'd already received the cash, we would already have a journal entry. But in this case, we know that something has happened to cause us to earn revenue or incur an expense, even though the cash hasn't changed hands. So we're always going to see two entries. These come in pairs. Any adjusting entry, it comes in a pair. For the accrual, the initial entry is the adjusting entry. This is the one that's going to take place at the end of the period. The sub, what I call the subsequent entry, it's going to be the next entry later on sometime in the next period that handles the cash that related to this adjusting entry. So for the accrual, the initial entry is the adjusting entry. We're going to see the other side, the reclassifications and deferrals. In this case, the revenue or expense is going to be recognized after we have already received the cash. It's going to be in another period. So in other words, the cash transaction comes first, we record that, and then later on we're going to recognize revenue or expense. So the initial entry, which could happen at any point, maybe halfway through the period, it doesn't matter, this is the cash entry. This is not the adjusting entry. This is when the cash actually changed hands. The subsequent entry in this case is going to be the adjusting entry when we finally realize that we've earned some of that cash or we've incurred some of that cash expense. Now these rules apply for all adjusting entries. There will always be at least one revenue or expense. There has to be one of those two and there has to be at least one asset or liability. Now you can have a mixture. Sometimes you'll see a revenue and a liability a revenue and an asset, an expense and an asset, an expense and a liability, but there has to be one from each of those pairs. That is an adjusting entry. The other tip to note is for these core adjusting entries we're talking about, you'll never see cash in the adjusting entry itself. In other words, if you see cash in one of those entries, that's not the adjusting entry. That's either the initial entry or the subsequent entry, depending on whether it's an accrual or a deferral. So for our adjusting entries we're talking about in this section, cash will never be there. It relates to a cash entry, but the entry itself for the adjusting entry is not cash. Now we're going to focus on some adjustments, some examples of accrual adjustments. One example for an accrued expense. So for each of these, both reclasses and deferrals, we're going to have accrued expenses and accrued revenues. And then later on, we'll see deferred expenses and deferred revenues. 
So an example of this might be an accrued salary entry or an accrued interest expense entry. Salary is quite common. Anybody that has a, a job where they get paid every two weeks or so is familiar with this to some extent. In this example, employees are paid $500 every week on Friday. So it's $100 per day for five business days. The next weekly Friday happens to fall on, fall on January 2nd of whatever year we're talking about. So in this year, the earlier year that ends December 31st, we have to record an adjusting entry to reflect salary expense for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday because the employees have worked for us. Even though we're not paying them yet, we have to accrue a salary expense. The journal entry for this will be to debit salaries expense to increase it and to credit salaries payable to increase that liability. So we're increasing both of these accounts for this accrual. The subsequent entry will occur next year when we actually pay it. Now what happens here on January 2nd, we have the full payday, $500. So jumping down to the credit, we're going to have to credit cash for $500. we are going to have to debit salaries payable for the $300 that we set up earlier. We debited that to, uh, to decrease it. But we still have $200 extra dollars that we have not yet recorded as an expense. We're going to do it now. This is basically Thursday and Friday that falls in this later year. So $500 debits, $500 credits, we are good to go. Now remember, cash was not in the adjusting entry, but it is in the subsequent entry that deals with the payment. Accrued revenues, one example here might be interest revenue. We've earned the revenue, but we haven't received the payment yet. Or unbilled, but earned services. So this is maybe not as common. Although it is, it is fairly common for companies to have billing cycles where they, they bill at a certain point, maybe the following month. They bill for all services provided this month on the 15th of the next month. Let's just use that as an example. The company earns $1,000 for services provided in December. However, they have not yet billed it or collected it. Company policy is to bill for all services on the 15th of the following month. So the adjusting entry here is to debit accounts receivable for $100,000 to increase this receivable. We know we are entitled to this money. We're going to receive it. We're debiting it to increase it. We're crediting revenue to increase that to show that we've earned money. We don't have to bill for it necessarily to earn it. Billing is part of the collections process, not the earnings process. So notice we have an asset and we have a revenue. The subsequent collection of those revenues in January, that's going to be just, it's not an adjusting entry, it's the actual cash entry. We debit cash, 400000 to increase it. We've received it now. And we credit accounts receivable for 100000 to reduce that because now we've already received it. We aren't owed anything anymore. So this takes us through our discussion of the accrual entries and we'll move on here to the reclassifications in the next section.